entropy and negentropy or neg entropy. Dear Ascending Family, Consciousness is energy, and energy is conscious, and as such they are interchangeable. Energy is directed through many intelligent systems in which it either contracts or expands to lower or increase its frequency rate. When energy continually contracts, it is decreasing in amount through losses of energy, which lowers the frequency rate. When energy continually expands, it is increasing in amount through gains of energy, which heightens the frequency rate. Our spiritual bodies are also systems of consciousness energy. Thus, they also lose or increase energy, depending on many different factors. We will attempt to drill down a bit further into these factors and exposures, sourcing from both personal and impersonal forces. Everything has an energetic signature and is composed of spectrums of frequency arranged in form-holding blueprints. Our blueprint and light body is an energetic system. For the light body to be constricted and losing energy, the person is choosing destructive behaviors and or is exposed to lower frequencies which lose or leak energy. For the light body to expand and increase energy, the person is choosing positive behaviors and or is exposed to higher frequencies which maintain or gain energy. All systems, including the earth body and human bodily systems, require sources of energy in order to function well. Further, they require consistent sources of energy in order to evolve, expand, and progress in consciousness over time. During the chaotic transformation happening on the earth, it is important to be able to accurately discern the energetic source powering a system. We will need to ask where the energy source of a system is being generated from and if there are excessive expenditures of energy or energetic drains through destructive behaviors of consumptive modeling. As we progress in the new time cycle during the bifurcation, every detail of our existence will be under magnification as we interact with any kind of energetic system. The clarity of where we direct personal energy and attention is being amplified in order to plainly see where our energy is being directed and how it is being used. The question we need to ask is, where is our personal energy being drained? And where is our energy being supported and restored? Thus, in this new energy paradigm, all of our personal choices will be representative of how we discern the subtle energies present, along with our internal energies, and whether those combined energies are effectively self-generating and self-organizing. We will naturally look for systems that are energetically balanced, sustainable, stable, transparent, clear, and serving the greater whole with proper value exchanges. We must ask the deeper question of ourselves. 
Are we feeding closed source parasitic systems that are moving towards entropy? Or are we willing to transform in order to direct our energy towards the greater cause of open source systems that are moving towards neg entropy? Entropy defines the loss of energy present in a closed source system, while neg entropy defines the increase or maintenance of the energy present in an open source system. Now we are given the choice to figure this out for ourselves based on our personal resonances and frequency level. In our day-to-day -day existence, we live in a complex environment that requires that we interact with a great many systems that are defined as physical structures. The five main controller pillars of society are constructed on many hidden layers of entropic systems. These systems of control require energy from others in order to continue to influence planetary affairs as a part of the archontic deception strategy. These systems create incredible losses of energy and are parasitic to the human race. As we undergo the spiritual awakening or ascension process, we become increasingly multidimensional and more self-aware. We perceive things that we never perceived before. As a result, we are exposed to the inner revelation of discovering a whole new set of systems which we didn't see before. Yet, we unfold into the realization that we are interacting with a variety of forces that interplay with many systems. And these systems exist at many different energetic levels. Becoming multidimensional and awakening in consciousness means that we pay attention to the whole energetic system. We look for the loss of energy present in physical matter, and then we source where the loss of energy is occurring in our multidimensional or spiritual bodies. If we allow our spiritual body to tend towards interacting with entropic systems, we feel the drain. We must have the maturity to realize this type of interaction is harmful to our spiritual consciousness. Hence, our goal is to explore and find ways to increase energy in our spiritual bodies, develop higher consciousness, and learn how to evolve towards collaborating with open source, or negentropic systems. Systems. A system is a set of interactive or interdependent component parts forming a complex and intricate whole. Every system is delineated by the law of structure operating in the time and space environment in which it exists and is the byproduct of the quality of consciousness that originally created it. A system is described by its original purpose and intention of creation, which is expressed in its overall functioning. As an example, if a system is created by the predator mind for the main purpose of self-interest, controlling others, gaining power, or service to self-motives. All of the components functioning 
within that system will continue to generate and reflect the same corrupt energy at its core. This means it is rotten at its core. It will continue to lose energy over time. And the system has to be restructured in order to stop the energetic drain upon the environment and human resources. Systems have many different layers and levels of components designed to work together, with all of these parts having functions that are interdependent. For these systems to function optimally, they must organize or cohere in such way to interconnect and communicate as an integrated whole. This requires that the systems run on the energy levels required to meet the demands of each of its functioning parts. Each functioning part of a system has a behavior and interrelationship to other parts of that system. How well a part functions will have an impact on another functioning part in that system. So clearly, if one part is not functioning well, it will impair other parts of that system from functioning well. If the energy of a part is not restored to improve its function, a breakdown of the system will occur. When a system is comprised of many different parts on which it relies to function overall, each smaller part will function in a specific behavior that operates like an input and output station. This can be understood as the communication level that is interconnecting the functions between all of the parts. Communications made in systems require a transmission, output, and reception, input, of information in order to share intelligence or generate functions within the parts of the system. If the transmission is made without the ability to receive the information within the system, the functioning for that intelligence transmission is rendered useless. Essentially, this describes the state of the closed source system on the Earth grid, operating a one-way messaging system. Until very recently, the planet was unable to receive two-way communication exchanges from outside the negative alien agenda control fences in our solar system. All forms of balanced energy communications require two-way exchanges, transmission and reception, input and output, in order to create the third aspect or result of that combined energetic process. In order for the functioning parts of an entire system to maintain their relationship together and to accomplish healthy functioning, they will require the appropriate amount of energy. All systems require energy. In a complex system comprising many different parts and layers, however, in the overall process of functioning, some parts in that system will have behaviors that leak energy. No system is completely energy efficient and self-sustainable in the process of running complex systems. And as a result, some energy will be lost through leakages created by the behaviors of certain parts. 
In the communication process formed between the various parts, a conversion of energy is needed to make inputs convert into outputs, which manifests as an expenditure of energy required to generate that function. The human body is a perfect example of a complex system requiring an energy source in order to generate the proper functioning required for all of its parts, which make up the entire bodily system. If the body does not get the suitable amount of energy to power up its systems, it's not going to run efficiently, and eventually the bodily systems will break down. We can apply this understanding to help us to improve the function of any kind of system. And remember that all systems and communications require energy. To improve energy management in our life, we will want to know where and from whom the energy is sourcing from and how it circulates. The state of energetic breakdown is what we can observe as the causal reason behind many behavioral dysfunctions and disease states that are commonly diagnosed in the medical system. We observe the breakdown of human bodily systems caused from consistent loss of energy over time, which impairs the ability of that person to create balanced health, increase self-awareness, or further expand into higher consciousness, thus propagating a closed energy system that promotes the loss of energy, energy leakages, and energy harvesting from both the earth and humanity is a strategy implemented by human and non-human controllers who carry out the agenda to suppress human consciousness. By promoting a closed source system of architecture upon the earth, they are able to siphon or use other people's energy and hijack the earth's energy which they use to manifest their control agenda and artificial timelines. A closed source system is a type of system which is unable to receive any new energy source from within or outside of itself. Because all systems require energy, a closed system will turn into a parasitic system that attaches to other living things in order to harvest their energy. However, a closed source system will eventually run out of energy and tend towards entropy, eventually breaking itself down. Over time, the breakdown of that system leads to the annihilation or destruction of that system and whatever had created it. There are various ways the controllers have programmed closed source systems of architecture into the energetic fields of the earth in order to manifest an array of entropic systems as a strategy for inflicting mind control upon the masses. Once closed source system architecture and entropy is understood, however, it becomes very clear how to identify the energy signature present in any kind of operating system, whether biological or structural, when paying attention to the energetic movement and behavior of that system. Energy behavior does not lie, and it can be measured. Energetic behavior will show from where the actual energy is being generated, revealing 
whether it's a closed source parasitic system of architecture or an open source self-sustaining architecture. An open source system is able to receive new energy from within and outside of itself. This means that open source systems will be able to continue to run internal and external energy in order to maintain energetic balance and homeostasis throughout its systems. An open source system will be able to replenish lost energy and tend towards maintaining states of neg entropy, which keeps its overall functioning over time balanced and stable. With an open source system, time is on its side. Eventually, time will reveal the truth of the source of energy it is circulating through its ability to maintain balance and stability of its overall functioning without using parasitic means to accomplish its purpose. More on entropy and negentropy. In science, entropy is defined as a loss of energy in human systems and makes the tendency of that system to become increasingly disorganized and less efficient due to gradual energy loss within the system. Entropy, or the loss of energy, is what makes a system break down, fall apart, instigate chaos, and function far less efficiently. Understanding how the concept of entropy works from micro to macro levels in our universe will help us to understand the impact and effect of energy loss, energy siphoning, and energetic harvesting made upon living systems. It is supportive to our spiritual growth and consciousness expansion to be able to identify when and where entropy is present and influencing our lives in order to clear or resolve its harmful effects. Entropy is a concept that is applied to all energetic behaviors and influences as well as the quality of thought forms present within energetic systems, such as living organisms, and directly lowers the frequency of a human being's state of consciousness. When we feed entropic behaviors and systems, we will suffer energy loss. Entropy contributes greatly to all behavioral dysfunctions, misperception of reality, as well as manifesting diseases. This impairs all levels of the human body's functioning, physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, at individual levels and at collective levels. Entropy as a loss of energy in systems works through principles of low frequency resonance and can spread like a virus infecting others in the environment with the same entropic result or loss of energy. When we are not self-aware, or are operating from instinctual or unconscious egoic reactions, we can easily match the same low vibration and catch the entropic virus, becoming extremely energetically drained, 
and spreading that drain to other systems. In science, negentropy is the opposite of entropy. It is defining the open source architecture of free energy made available to replenish any loss of energy that may occur in the management of a system in order to retain its balanced functioning in all of its component parts. Neg entropy is increasing energy over time within any kind of system, making more energy available to be circulated for the overall benefit of the whole or humanity. This makes the tendency of those systems increasingly organized and more efficient due to gradual energy increases made available to those systems in order to achieve sustainable levels of functioning. In human bodily systems, negentropy increases the available energy to more efficiently run the internal systems, which manifest externally as a balanced, clear, and healthy person. Negentropy, or growing the available energy access given to that system, improves or maintains the higher capacity and efficiency of the whole system. Neg entropy can be thought of in terms that are synonymous with free energy circulation with the infinite and internal energy source, cosmic order, synchronous alignment, and the sustainability of open source systems. Entropy can be thought of in terms that are synonymous with energetic debt and enslavement, disorder, chaotic forces, and traumatic alignment, and the parasitism of closed source systems. Human groups are energetic systems. Humanity is evolving into learning how to better function within group consciousness as a byproduct of the ascension cycle. Thus, many of us are purposefully thrust into situations that involve navigating group consciousness, such as communities, organizations, memberships, professions, and a multitude of other types of group relationships. Many people on the ascension path are guided into some form of spiritual or consciousness community. This is not only to learn and develop themselves spiritually, but to explicitly gain self-knowledge in how to successfully navigate group dynamics by improving conflict resolution and communication skill sets without being negatively triggered. We have to learn how to get along with each other peacefully and harmoniously in a group setting. And many of us will be facing these kinds of social challenges now. As we face an array of social challenges, we will be measuring our energetic output and input as forms of available energy in order to determine what activities expend too much energy and when we need to conserve energy. This is directly related to the new skill set of the discernment of entropic and negentropic systems, bringing awareness to the behavior of systems and how that loss of energy or increase of energy influences our lives. 
To participate with the ascension cycle requires our transformation away from serving the individualistic, egocentric self. It also requires finding our place within group consciousness without losing the core of our real self or draining our energy. When we are not being our true self, we are drained of energy used for putting up an egoic facade. While we are losing our negative ego identity, we are in the process of finding the real inner self and finding new ways to increase our energy. This is how we learn to expand our ability to feel comfortable with ourselves while we are participating or observing a variety of roles or archetypes that may reveal themselves within a group consciousness. Eventually, our goal is to become aware of the roles or archetypes that we play unconsciously and to clear ourselves from hiding behind them as masks that we show the public. Unconscious masks drain our energy and are created from wounded ego, unresolved conflicts, ingrained fears of vulnerability, and betrayals of misplaced trust in others. Becoming authentic while in a group setting requires us to shed our false identities and express ourselves transparently and authentically without ever needing to defend who we are. This takes practice to finally get it right. Whatever group you may be connected to at this time has a higher purpose for personal spiritual growth, completing karmic cycles, as well as learning how to maintain, conserve, or increase personal energy. This experience in a group helps us to develop into greater spiritual maturity, to gain the direct knowledge and experience of unity in diversity that is inherently present within group consciousness. When we have self-realization of this fact, we experience the deep connection we have to others which further increases our genuine feelings of empathy and compassion for the world. When we are self-interested and egocentric, we cease to have the ability to have feelings of empathy or true compassion for others. Evolving into group consciousness does not mean we become homogenized as a race. It means we give up our intrinsic selfishness and learn how to be of service to the whole by respecting and allowing others to be a reflection of our interconnectedness. The planetary body is elevating its frequencies to potentially go beyond the closed source system of architecture that makes up the lower energies, the three layers of ego or individuated egoic programming. Whenever we are involved with a group consciousness, we will be facing challenging issues of conflict resolution between all the parties involved to the degree that these three layers of ego are still in control of those present. The negative ego program is a destroyer. It is important to understand how unresolved conflicts generated from negative ego programs are a form of mind control and work as a closed system architecture that drains energy from the organized purpose of the overall group consciousness. 
When there are hidden conflicts existing between members in a group that make up the components of its human system of energy, these unresolved conflicts consume energy beyond that which is needed for the system to function well, and this increases entropy. This is why flushing out hidden conflicts and bringing them into transparency and honesty in open dialogues between the parties involved is always the right answer. Transparency is an open source system concept and a very important part of conflict resolution and thus for maintaining the higher energetic functioning within any group consciousness or community. Conversely, dark forces behave in closed source systems of architecture by promoting fear they will obfuscate and confuse the issue at hand in order to increase interpersonal conflict, escalate chaos, and spread disorder in a group. The imposter spirits and the negative ego are extremely clever at twisting kernels of truth in order to spread misinformation and hearsay to break apart the unity and order that is present within group consciousness. Not only is this a divide-and-conquer technique to split up group consciousness, but it is how energy is diverted away from being effective in serving the higher purpose of the group's functioning. When people are in continual states of chaos or confusion, and spread unverified forms of gossip or negativity, the energy is drained from those in the group who take the bait of negativity and has an overall impact to the group. If this energetic drain is not corrected through conflict resolution, and if transparency is not given to the situation, the group runs the risk over time, with the accumulation of multiple unresolved conflicts, to eventually break down and cease to exist. Conflict resolution and facing conflicts with honest transparency removes the energetic loss that conflict creates within human systems, such as organized groups. Sometimes it is possible that deeply honest forms of compassionate communication used to resolve conflicts can actually assist the people involved in the group to gain energy and become even stronger in their purpose. When we show true empathy for others' point of view, this can powerfully unite people with a common vision or goal. This is important to understand in any kind of interaction made between small or large groups of people, whether it's family members, business colleagues, project management, or spiritual communities. Most people that have not experienced spiritual awakening are primarily controlled through their lower three layers of ego and are easily manipulated into deception, fear, and spreading dark forces through their lack of impulse control and self-awareness. The three layers of ego operate as entropic systems and drain energy from a being, who in turn will find ways to unconsciously parasitize the environment or other people in order to gain back the energy lost. People that are addicted to thought forms, extremely intellectual and mentally developed with little heart opening, will resist comprehending this. This form of entropy applies 
to individual people, groups of people, and organizations of all kinds. If an organization is formed for the express purpose of negative ego goals, service to self, it will naturally fall into the day-to-day -day operation that defines an entropic system. If over time this is not corrected, extreme parasitism occurs, which can be quantified as massive energy harvesting. If the person exposed to massive energy harvesting falls into negative polarity within all three layers of his or her lower chakra systems, they are at high risk of running electron reversals throughout their multi-dimensional body. This entropic state is called metatronic reversal. Metatronic reversal. This is an entropic system of architecture intended to digress consciousness from the original Christos divine blueprint of the 12 tree grid and manifest the closed source system of Antichrist life forms. When the original creation program of the crystal code from God's source is altered or modified in any way, the ability to self-regenerate and ascend is interrupted from the loss of energy present. This eventually leads to energetic collapse or internal implosion of the blueprint system, which manifests as fallen consciousness and then potential annihilation. The black substance that manifests in the lower dimensions is connected to streams of unconscious impersonal forces, elementals, and husks that enmesh with the lower spirit hierarchies. This is one way to understand how an excessive amount of black substance that makes up hungry ghosts, shadow creatures, and satanic hierarchies became buried and trapped in the earth body. Altering the open source system of the crystal code architecture means a limited supply of energy is made available to the human light body. The modified coding that has been written into the planetary body cannot circulate or receive any more energy directly from the eternal God source. The Metatronic, or Antichrist being, cut off from eternal source, has to suck energy from other entities and systems. This being progressively consumes itself. Therefore, when it eventually comes to the end of an evolution cycle, it has a finite lifespan. Fallen consciousness, such as fallen angelics and imposter spirits, are due to metatronic code configurations in the planet. These configurations are the result of excessive misuse of free will choice that opposes the divine plan and intention of God's source. In the cycles of evolution, the opposing expression of negative polarity reaches the point at which it has experienced a massive loss of energy and is unable to replace that energy. The beings that refuse to rehabilitate themselves into a process of higher evolution at the end of a cycle jeopardize their ability to return back into the eternal life expression and continue their existence within the cosmic order. This is the Metatronic Reverse Mutation, 
and, unfortunately, for any being who seeks ascension into the eternal life, crystal spirals, this mutated coding, which also manifests into the predator mind, blocks or obstructs that higher consciousness potential. When this happens, the manifest being is unable to fulfill their soul expression and highest purpose to maintain the cosmic order. This is the state of fallen consciousness. Metatronic frequencies are not just an issue here on planet Earth, but extend into many layers of the multidimensional anatomy in the universal time matrix. Entropic, coded, metatronic spirals. Over the last 5,000 years, our planet has been operating on a closed source bywave system with a finite energy supply consuming others' energies and forming parasitic relationships has multiplied into massive proportions on our planet. This energetic imbalance was purposely programmed by the negative alien controllers to distort the organic relationship between the electron and proton spin rates. The life force energy was being harnessed using hijacked creational code and inorganic architecture by controllers through the Vesica Pisces bipolar geometry. The hijacked Vesica Pisces architecture kept the binary code locked down in our planet so that the Trinity wave code would not be accessible. It forced reversal and splitter patterns that continually fragmented the human species consciousness in multiple dimensions. With the negative alien agenda invasion history and the war with competing off-planet species writing code into the planetary morphogenetic field, the attempts to modify human DNA and to genetically manipulate the original divine human blueprint are clear. Extra-dimensional entities have used the Fibonacci sequence and created artificial intelligence energetic wave spirals in order to hijack, siphon, and steal energy from the planetary body and humanity. These artificially generated Fibonacci spirals are created through alien machinery and artificial intelligence technology to be inorganic and parasitic. This is how the metatronic reversal fields were created, as well as the adverse Sephiroth, or artificial tree of life that is represented in Kabbalah teachings and made popular by black magicians such as Aleister Crowley. The Metatronic Code is based on two spheres of bi-wave influence or the Vesica Pisces instead of the eternal life three spheres or Trinity wave influence. Metatronic Code manifests reverse Merkaba ratios which force people's Merkabas to spin in ways that prevent ascension. Since the bifurcation event, the issue of discerning between entropic systems of metatronic reversal based on bi-wave closed systems and recognizing negentropic systems of crystal spiral based on tri-wave open source systems is 
crucial to our expanding consciousness. Negentropic coded crystal spirals. When the life force energy is drawn back into the source field through the trinitized geometries, the feedback loop of reciprocal source light is generated and expanded. Our goal during the new paradigm is to create the tritone or neutral field. This draws the composite energy back into the zero point through a feedback loop of energy back into the source of all creation. The Trinity field creates an eternal and perpetual supply of life force that regenerates the bodies by restoring the energy loss and eventually expanding consciousness. The crystal spiral has the potential to dissolve artificial structures that have attached or enmeshed with our light body from other lifetimes due to trauma histories and alien hybridization coding. It recollects and reorganizes spiritual body parts while returning obsolete energies back to be reabsorbed in the cosmic mother's womb. It is possible to accomplish this with spiritual dedication and service to develop our highest consciousness. Essentially, the use of correct mathematical principles based upon the Trinity field can return the free energy system of zero point back to earthlings. Christ consciousness connection to the zero point can be proven mathematically, as well as through one's direct spiritual experience. This eternal supply of life force is the cosmic Christos plasmic light and contains the Trinity principle. When this pattern is applied to matter, it is called a trinitized form. In simple terms, we accomplish this through genuinely opening our hearts and practicing unconditional love, kindness, forgiveness, and true compassion towards the self and others. If you practice the law of one as a committed lifestyle, any person can and will organically connect to the crystal spiral transmission. A personal commitment and dedication to loving and compassionate behaviors to serving your highest expression is the single most important factor of ascension. Radiant love is the most important force to fully embody, and whatever technique you choose to further develop true loving kindness is inconsequential. The crystal spiral perpetually retains a living, breathing connection through the preservation of what came before as it expands through multiplication. Out of the one comes the many. This statement is to contemplate the profound meaning of the upcoming Aquarian influence during the twelfth alchemical stage of multiplication. Multiplication is the alchemical process, which greatly increases the concentrated refinement, energetic effectiveness, and sphere of influence of the embodied biological Christos Sophia eternal light source. The planetary body and planetary logos are now free to follow the crystal spiral architecture in order to heal and help 
evolve the earth inhabitants and species. This path of ascending consciousness has been available since 2012 when the crystal hosting began. Fallen life forms have been undergoing sequential bifurcation of time in the consciousness fields and have no other choice but to digress further or split into the direction of the entropic code of the metatronic spiral. Unless they choose rehabilitation or transiting through guardian crystal host protocols. The fallen species do not have a DNA template that allows them to rise into higher dimensions, to leave the universe, or to hijack the crystal spiral or those human beings that are connected to that architecture. When the bifurcation of time and subsequent frequency split occurred, it made higher grid wars for control of the universal gates impossible. As a result of the change in planetary architecture, the Earth is out of the enslavement and control of the fallen life forms. It can heal into its original organic path of crystal spiral, can continue to accrete higher source energy, and can restore and replace lost energy. However, the fallen consciousness is still operating on the Earth's surface as the false king of tyranny, and they are still promoting the old fear programming of cataclysm, pestilence, and terrorism. The permanent seed atom is the center point for the crystal spiral, which maintains that connection to this center at every stage of consciousness expansion. The points on the crystal spiral are connected to the eighth chakra energy center or the thymus gland area by the central vertical lines of the personal blueprint. The crystal spiral expands through every 45 degrees of rotation or by two for every 90 degrees of rotation. This formula is derived from the height to width ratio of the diamond sun body or 12 tree grid. The number two as the grail point access to our cosmic mother is the key to the manifestation of the crystal spiral on earth. The crystal spiral forms a smooth exponential spiral that looks the same at every scale from the microcosmic level to the macrocosmic levels unlike the Fibonacci spiral. Our God source code is a trinity wave accessed through the merging of polarity. This alchemy occurs with the healing and merging of the inner masculine and feminine energies within our spiritual bodies. The human race has been suppressed from connecting to God's source and Christ through the spiritual knowledge that manifests as this sacred union relationship. Most religions controlled the masses to forget the great mystery that God exists as both male and female energetic principles and that the patriarchal God has an equal that is his wife. One will not know God without loving and knowing both the mother and father principle as united equals. As above, so below. Sacred union or hieroscamos is our divine birthright, and this organic, negentropic architecture is being returned to our planet and to humanity. The crystal spiral increases the energy available to steadily increase this possibility of spiritual freedom and herogamic union between equals to manifest on the earth. 
The sacred union personification is about perfected inner energetic balance between gender principles as both an inner and outer principle of balanced wholeness. Oscillation to vibration incompatibilities. The process of how fast or slow the energy expands away from the center point of the source field is the oscillation rate. The process of how fast or slow the same energy contracts back towards its center point of source field is the vibration rate. The combination of both the pattern of vibration, which is a contraction, and oscillation as an expansion is the speed of what determines the frequency rate of all energy and all things. As our personal, collective, and planetary consciousness rises in frequency, the matter world becomes less dense. Our physical bodies also become less dense as our frequency increases. However, in the world of matter, as we drop density, we can feel that our body is experiencing energy loss. Sometimes our blueprint is holding a much higher frequency and energetic download, which is accreting and not yet absorbed. And this can make the body feel extremely dense. It is important to know this is a common ascension symptom when the physical body is acclimating to embody higher frequency. When we have ascension flu and exhaustion symptoms from acclimating to new energies, this is not an entropic process. This is actually negentropic as the body is acclimating to embody more light in the cells and generating more ATP. At stages of light body accretion, the body will experience oscillation to vibration incompatibilities through the exposure to higher frequency rates in the blueprint versus the body. When this occurs, it is possible for the person to experience sensations of heavy density, shadow clearing, and as the body senses the gravitational pull, this creates pressure. The energetic pressure can feel as if it is bearing down on the body from the crown of the head. Tension and stiffness from the influx of new energy will apply pressure for the body to circulate and distribute these energies. This is first commonly felt in the head, neck, and shoulders. Sensations of pressure moving down with thermal energies circulating in other areas of the body comes later. During the body's absorption phase, the light body is more unstable. Before the new frequency is fully integrated while in this phase, you will feel tired and need more sleep. Learning how to accurately discern the necessary energy expenditures that are for productive and spiritually healthy purposes, such as light body integration, will help you to recognize that not all energy expenditures are equal. Directing energy towards developing ourselves spiritually, gaining virtues, and staying awake while others are asleep can be an exhausting job. This is not entropic. As we commit to our personal spiritual development 
and live a lifestyle in accordance to the law of one, all energy will be returned to you. And over time, it will be made crystal clear. Please only take what is useful for your spiritual growth and discard all the rest. Thank you for your courage and bravery to be a truth seeker. Until next, stay in the luminosity of your avatar, Christos Sophia Heart Path. Please be kind to yourself and to each other. God sovereign free until next month.